What's going on guys? Just wanted to uh, just take a couple of minutes and just have a chat with you about obviously what I went on with the birth uh, of Charlie with me and Emily and the plans going forward for the uh, the stream over the next week or two uh, and for the foreseeable. Ju just be warned, obviously the story's not, uh, not the best in all honesty so uh, I just wanted to say that before we talked about it in case anyone else has been through like similar situations or it's due to the missus to, to give birth and stuff like that um, but it'll be quite a long one. I'll go as quick as I can to go through everything. Emily says that I waffle on when I tell a story, so I'll be as quick as I can. But, yeah, so, Thursday evening, the 5th of November, Emily went into the hospital at half past five to be induced. Uh, they did the induction um, at about quarter to eight, and then I had to leave at eight o'clock because your partners aren't allowed to stay unless they're in active labour. That's nothing to do with COVID or anything like that. That's just the rules that they have, 8 a.m. till 8 p.m. Uh, on the ward. So I had to come away. Um, that was tough because obviously Emily was upset. She didn't want me to leave her. Um, and then Emily's waters broke about midnight. Then I got a phone call about 5 a.m. saying that she was moving down to delivery suite. So I got up, got dressed, fl flew down there as fast as I can. Um, expecting to like you know like you see in the movies you get there you're a couple of minutes too late or whatnot not really knowing what to expect Um, I got into the delivery suite room and M was on the gas and air uh, it's just a, just a standard standard textbook uh, birth up to that point um, and then Emily's always said that she wants an epidural if and so they got her an epidural and it worked amazing like absolutely amazing it couldn't have been any better if, if you don't know what an epidural is it's where they inject um, a needle into your back and it basically numbs everything so she couldn't feel any of the contractions she couldn't feel anything and then we had to wait for um i think it was six hours we had to wait for a cervix to open to 10 centimeters uh, because you women have to dilate to 10 centimeters before they can give give birth so it was six hours that we waited and she was at nine centimeters and then we had to wait another two hours on top of that before she could begin pushing so we'd had an eight hour wait so far but like i say we were just sat there uh just talking that like emily couldn't feel any pain or anything like that she was absolutely perfect and then uh, she started pushing I think she started pushing at about half past, no, quarter to seven she started pushing. And uh, she was pushing for about an hour, an hour and 45 minutes, which isn't too long in, in the grand scheme of things. And she was doing amazing, like absolutely amazing. She was doing so, so well with it. And again, she wasn't feeling any pain. She wasn't having any issues whatsoever. And then she started to get this pain in the bottom left of her back and the bottom front, uh, uh, the front left of her, her abdomen. And the pain just become more and more and more excruciating for her. Like, and she had an epidural in still, so she shouldn't have been feeling anything. And she was in agony. Like, I, I, looking at her, like the way she was, she was, she had the epidural on. She'd gone back back to the gas and air, so she was having both. Uh, they got the person that did the epidural in, and they turned the dosage up to um what it like a, a lot higher than it was to try and numb the pain. And it just whatever she did, it just wasn't working. The pain was just getting worse and worse and worse. So they had to call a doctor in, one of the doctors in, one of the surgeons in, and he basically examined Emily. And what he said was Charlie at that point was a little bit twisted. Uh, babies have to be in a certain position to, to come out of the lady, like through the lady's pelvis and, and, and to come out. And he wasn't in the correct position. So what they wanted to do was they wanted to take Emily down to the theatre, which is just standard practice, because um, what they were going to do was going to use that suction cup, which they put on the baby's head, and they turn them and then hopefully pop them out. Um, if that didn't work, they were going to try a set of forceps. And the doctor said, I think, I think, I'll, be, like, I think I'll get it perfectly. I, it's nothing to worry about, because Emily's always been adamant like, that she, if she could avoid a C-section, she really, really didn't want a C-section. So... Obviously, Emily's still in absolutely excruciating pain. It's getting worse and worse and worse. And then what happens then is they leave the room with Emily on the bed because obviously she can't walk or anything like that. At this point, there's eight or nine people in the room. They leave the room. They leave me on my own in the room. And I have to put some scrubs on because I'm going into a theatre. So I have to be everything surgical. that has to be clean and stuff like that. And they said I'll be around 20 minutes of waiting. But before, um, obviously... I go down to see Emily and obviously trying to deliver to Charlie and try and use these forceps and the cup. So 20 minutes went by and the, the midwife came back and we was walking down to the theatre and, and she said to me, don't worry, everything will be fine. I think they're just going to 
use the suction cup and and we'll get him out and everything will be brilliant. So at that point, it's still it's still a standard. We're, we're not too worried. Um, I've walked into the theatre. Emily was on the theatre desk, if that, if desk table, whatever you want to call it. And as I get there, they get you a chair out because if you've, if you've seen in all the movies, the man sits at the head. And then it, if they have to do a C-section, that's why you go down to theatre because they're already there because they have to administer more um, anaesthetic. As I go to sit down, uh, the woman that was in there said, no, Paul, we need Paul to leave. Paul needs to get out for a minute. So I, I, I was like, okay. So I just got up straight away and left because obviously they're in charge and they're doing what's best for Emily. 10 minutes goes by. I'm sat right outside the theatre and I can see like through the crack of the door, I can see like people moving and working and working and working. And then a doctor comes out, a surgeon. Uh, the surgeon comes out to me uh, and he says, look, um, unfortunately, we, we've had to put Emily to sleep um when they've had when they've it's still like making me a little bit emotional so bear with me when they put the anesthetic in her back it went up rather than going like down and numbing like a, a stomach and everything like that it went up which basically meant her, her diaphragm like a windpipe she had no control over any of her muscles in theory she couldn't breathe she she had no way to breathe and she was theoretically she if they'd have left her she'd have died because she couldn't breathe so they had to put her to sleep straight away but because emily wasn't breathing emily wasn't taking oxygen on that meant charlie wasn't getting any oxygen that means Ch that charlie wasn't getting anything through the placenta so they had to perform an emergency c-section um on emily while she was asleep i wasn't in the room and then the specialist neonatal team came down which obviously look after young sort of babies and stuff like that um, and they were in a separate room so emily was in in the surgical room they were in a separate room with with charlie and i was outside I, like, I wasn't allowed anywhere near anything that was going on and then after about 10 minutes went by a further 10 minutes went by they allowed me to go into the room where charlie was and the the doctor was there and he had an oxygen mask on him and I, I'm still not quite sure of the wording, but I think what he said is that we 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 basically had to sort of resuscitate him and give him a little bit a little bit of help, and he'd been on oxygen for ten minutes. Um, sorry about the lighting, by the way. Um, he was he was quite he was quite blue to be, he was really blue, Charlie, and he, he looked like he was struggling to breathe. But they took him after ten minutes. They took him off the oxygen, and he, he had to go up to the neonatal unit upstairs, and then we had to wait for. He had to have a load of tests. We had to wait for Emily to come round in recovery. Obviously, Emily had no idea like that Charlie had even been born. She last she knew she was going down to theatre, so like she doesn't remember being put under or anything like that. Um, so yeah, what what's supp what's supposed to be the most the best moment of your life? It's the best moment of your life. The the best day of our lives was going that way it was going amazing but it's the most horrendous experience i've ever been through in my life horrendous like and i know that obviously emily's been through worse because but from both sides of it we've both been through hell and back the last few days and i think we're both still struggling to come to terms with it a little bit struggling to come to terms with how it went that way and, and how that happened and luckily emily's fine Obviously, she's struggling because she's had she had to have an emergency C section. Charlie's fine; he's been checked and everything like that. he's doing really, really well. Um, but yeah, obviously, with Emily being less mobile, struggling a little bit, I don't know how much time we're gonna have for streams over the coming days. Uh, because obviously, Emily's breastfeeding him and everything like that. But aside from that, um, I'm sort of doing the leg leg work and just sort of trying to look after everything else. So streams might have to take a back burner for a little bit it depends it, it really depends on how charlie is at the time that stream comes around whether we can do a, a few hours and, and stuff like that but i just wanted to come and have a chat with you guys and just explain to you and, and just explain the birth to you and and, and just how, how how crazy it was how crazy it was it, it's obviously upsetting for us it's still upsetting for us because you look forward to that moment from the moment that you find out that you, you're going to have a baby you, you look forward and, and it, you see it in movies how like it's the best moment of your life it's the best experience of your life and it was the worst for us the absolute worst and that that's devastating to both of us it still upsets us but like obviously we're both very very happy we're both very very um getting used to being new parents now and uh, and settling back in at home i think getting back home was was the the big thing so yeah 
keep an eye out for us boys we'll go live when we can go live and obviously when we are live we'll introduce charlie on the stream to you guys but i just wanted to i wanted to keep you guys in the loop and let you know what was going on but thanks for everything and uh yeah i'll see you soon